The fact that it was goalless going into the second leg and they were at home for it. Somebody else who was at the Emirates for it was our Jan Agafiotov. What can you tell us about the game, Jan? Well, it was an exciting game because Arsenal came out as a rocket. They were unbelievable the first 20 minutes. Martinelli, it was taxi for Alexander-Arnold. It was unbelievable how they did it. But then you saw Jota do the, did the oldest trick in the book. He just knows that the goalkeeper got to go with him, his movements, and then he wrong foot him. And Ramsdale look, does look good on, on that goal. And Jota loves to score against Arsenal. That's the team in England has scored the most <coughs> goals against. But, and then Arsenal tried to come back in the game. But I, I think that just show where Arsenal are at the moment. There are some young, talented boys, but they need experience. They need that what Liverpool got. And, and Alexander-Arnold, Alexander I mean, he, score, he makes assists for fun. Uh, great pass to, to Jota, who just chipped the ball in there. And, and I think this was an important win for, uh, for Liverpool. I mean, there are criticisms saying that they haven't taken these cups seriously and so on and so on. But mind you, when I go to the final, they will take that, that serious. And it's important for the players, for the fans and for Jurgen Klopp to go into a final and it's going to be a great final between Chelsea and Liverpool. It's going to be Tuchel. It's uh, going to be Klopp. Uh, it's going to be a, a civil war of Germans. So this will be a great final end of February. Oh, it absolutely will. Stevie, what a player Diogo Jota has turned out to be for Liverpool. I mean, it's incredible. He's, he's, he's almost won every two games. I mean, that's, that's world-class finishing and world-class play and as as much as a mishit I'm going to say his first goal was you talk about using your brain you know the ball from Alexander Arnold yes is a great ball but Jota sums the situation up he sees White coming across he knows the place to go is across White which takes him right out of the game he can't make a challenge and then he just dings it over uh, Ramsdale and goal. I mean, you talk about a, a football brain uh, and a guy who just knows exactly what he's doing uh, and how to go about it. And, and again, clinical finishing. Uh, what did you take away from it, Shaka? Uh, well, uh, a lot. First of all, everybody's uh, sang Diego Jota's praises, and, and, and for good reason, uh, not just because of his two goals, but I think it was about midway through the second half, Jota won and won with Ben White, far out on the left, and just totally left Ben White for dead. Ben White, who we've been singing uh, his praises a lot of late. And it just summed up how unplayable Jota was on the day. He got by Ben White, square to Gordon, who, who, skied, who skied the effort, but what a goal that would have been. Um, but but for me, and I think a lot of focus was on Arsenal, because they were at home, because of that nil-nil with 10 men um, in, in, in the first leg. And I have, to, I have to disagree with Jan a little. I thought Martinelli was very good. But other than that, I, I, I struggled to see where Arsenal's real thrust was, was going to come from. They had one shot on target in, in 90 minutes of football at home eh, when they went behind and, and needed to get something out of the game. And for me, as, as, as the game went on, I'm looking at Arsenal and they seemed to set up almost in two banks of five, which was a little bit surprising, but then didn't seem to have a plan in terms of counter-attacking or when they won the ball back, how, how they break on Liverpool. That for me was a little bit disappointing tactically from, from Arteta and as a result I, I don't think they threatened um, they, they threatened Liverpool anywhere near as much as, as they should have after that opening well, five or six minutes. Jan? Okay. No, I just, I, I, I don't agree with Shaka. I think the, the 20 minutes they did well in, in the midfielders took the ball. They had good passing mm. through the lines after 20 minutes but after the game I, I had pitch side Van Dijk and I asked him about this 20 minutes where they had a bit problem. And I said, how did you have to structure, do the structure? Did you have to change a bit? And it just showed you the Liverpool, how they think and how Van Dijk think. Now we just kept on playing. We knew that we would take them on. And I think that is the big, big difference between Liverpool Football Club at the moment and Arsenal. Do you have to narrow the gap? And what I do agree with Shaka is that don't look dangerous enough going forward creating enough it's 100 percent clear that they miss a number nine a proper number nine that they can again get the ball to because there were too many times today especially after those 20 minutes 
that they just lashed the ball up, wanted to go for a striker. Like I said, can't keep the ball. They miss a big number nine to keep the ball for them. They don't have that guy. Uh, so you mentioned a big number nine, you know, maybe somewhere can, in the midfield can. as well, Jan. OK, Steve, I'll let you in. I think you, you want to say something. I, I, I want to say, I hope... You know, I hope that, that Arsenal give Ateta a little bit more time and and give him some money to go and sign a couple of a couple of real proven goal scorers and forwards because Liverpool were in trouble for that 15, 20 minutes because Arsenal did to Liverpool what Liverpool do to teams at Anfield. They squeeze the life out of them. That's what they did. They had, they, had, they had four up front pretty much stopping Liverpool getting out. The whole team was pushed away up tight. And Liverpool, for that period, up until they got the goal from nowhere, were, were looking... Well, they didn't look as though they were, they were going to get through Arsenal. Now, as Jan said, Liverpool have got the experience and they've got an extra gear when it comes to the final third because they have players like Jota and, of course, Salah and Mane when they come back. And then they've got the brains of Firmino. But... So, listen, that, that 20 minutes should show Arsenal upstairs what they're capable of because they had Liverpool not sure what to do. And, and yes, Jan saying Van Dijk said, well, we played a way out of it because that's the way they do it. But I tell you what, you've got to give a lot of credit to what they did Arsenal just before they lost that first goal. That's exactly where I'm going with it. I see you as well, Shaka, nodding. I think, did this game show the areas where Arsenal really do need to reinforce... Uh, absolutely. And, and, and I think Jan hit, it, hit the nail on the head. As this game is going on, I was thinking, this, it, Arsenal is screaming out for Aubameyang. No, don't get me wrong. I fully support what Arteta uh, is, is doing with, with Aubameyang and why he's, he's frozen him out um, as he has. I, I know he's away right now. But it, you, you just felt that that was exactly who, well, may, maybe not the name, but that was exactly the position that Arsenal needed. I, I really have enjoyed seeing seeing Arsenal's progress over, over these recent weeks. And with Stevie, I hope they give Arteta more time and, and support him in, in what he wants to do. Because I think finally, while we were questioning Arsenal and Arteta at the start of the season, you are seeing it come together. They're missing a few pieces. They're still a long way away from the likes of City and Liverpool. But they are making very good progress indeed. Uh, good I, think, I think what you... I, I just, yeah, I just want to say... Yeah, I just want to say it's a mixture of not getting the big names in, but someone who can also lead these young kids. I think good teams need, when young kids come in, you need the leaders out there, someone but a bit more experienced playing alongside a Martin Erdogan or a Smith Rowe and what all the names are. I think Martin Erdogan did well today, but they need some leaders in there who have been out there before on a, on a wet day pa in Party Stoke or whatever they call it. Guy. Party was supposed to be that guy, Jan, and, and I've, I've found him disappointing. I'll, I'll, I'll be really Party. honest. Who, yeah. who, who did you say? Yeah, <laughs> what about that Thomas story? Party he came was supposed home. to be that leader in midfield, and he's been disappointing. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.